Hey folks, Jonathan here. I wanted to give you a little update on what's going on. I've, we've had a bunch of rain here the last few days, so we're, we haven't got anything done on the record. Uh, worked on a few other little things, but I want to go ahead and do a video on hydraulics. And the reason being is the way that we're going to do this on the record. I want to be able to explain it to you, and you'll see why we're doing what we're doing and, and the way that we're going to do it and why we're not doing what we're not doing. And Hydraulics is, you know, a subject that I feel like I know a little bit about. I've done a, a bunch of them over the years. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'll get some pumps set up here and so I can so, show you a few different things. And then uh, we'll talk about it and I will discuss what we're going to do on the record and uh, how we're going to do it and, you know, the parts I've got to order and what I've got to buy for it. And... Uh, you'll get a better understanding of how we're going to do it. That way when, you know, I won't have to explain it as it goes because I'll probably miss a lot of it. But, uh, but you know, the, the hydraulic pump is like the heart of the truck. And then, you know, your control valves is no different than, you know, your, your brain and then it tells the fluid what to do. And uh, the cylinders are like the muscles. They do the work. So, I mean, it's, it's actually a really simple setup. You know, it's going to be an open center. Uh, you know, the... There's dual action cylinders, all of them, and then uh, you know just the hydraulic motors on the winch. So it's really not a you know not a complicated system. This will be your basic hydraulic system. But I'll go ahead and get some pumps here, and I'll you know, get the camera zoomed in here where I can show you what the uh, you know a couple different kinds of pumps, and, and you know explain to you which is best for our application and, and why. So, just a minute. Okay, folks, we've got a few pieces here laid out. I wanted to show you and explain a few things to you and tell you what we're going to do on our, our record here. First off, uh, pumps. Basically, three main styles of pumps. You've got a vein pump, a piston pump, and a gear pump. These two pumps here, which is this one and this one, are gear pumps. And these gear pumps have two gears in them that run. They mesh together. And as they turn, it actually pushes the fluid between them to pump. A uh, vein pump is sort of like a water wheel. It's got a, uh, a round piece in it with, you know, fins that flip out. And the fins sort of look, work, work like a water wheel. You know, it just spins around and pushes the fluid. And, of course, a piston pump is just what it says, a piston. And uh, the reason we use a gear pump over a piston or a vein pump, you know, especially a piston pump, is uh, more geared for variable speed. And when I say variable speed, I mean going from a low gallons per minute to a high gallons per minute. Uh, you know, something like on a uh, skid steer where you're, you know, moving slow and you want to move faster or something like that. And uh, gear pump, in my opinion, is as long as, you know, all of them are good as long as you keep a filter change, keep the system clean. But I think a gear pump, you know, is a little more durable, lasts longer. And I think it would handle a little bit more trash, you know, if, if it did get trash in it. But... But that's what we use on wreckers. Uh, don't know that I've ever seen a wrecker without a gear pump, but, you know, it's always possible. Okay, now that I've explained the three, you know, main styles of pumps, uh, there is about four different ways that we could, you know, possibly really drive that pump on our wrecker. Uh, one way would be electric over hydraulic. Well, that's electric motor running the pump, and that's something that, you know, on a on a small application, something that you're just you know moving a little bit would be fine. Nothing that we want to run on a on a commercial wrecker. Uh, second way would be off the PTO on the transmission on the side. Our problem there is we don't have a a gear in the transmission, and because the transmission come out with school bus, it's a 545, and uh, we can't. You know, we can change transmission or we can pull it apart and put, replace the gear. And really don't want to do either, but, you know, we'll see how that goes when we get there. I, I have another plan, and that's what we're going to go with now. And uh, if it changes, I'll let you know. Another way would be to drive a pump directly off the front of the crankshaft. And you see this on a lot of uh, snowplow trucks, uh, state trucks such as that. And... Uh, problem with that is, you know, you've got fluid flowing all the time, uh, helps create heat, you've got terrible fuel mileage, and uh, a lot more wear on the pump, 
you know, and stuff like that. So that's something that we definitely don't want to do. And uh, the other way, belt driven, and that's sort of like what this is. It's got an electric clutch on it, just like an air conditioning unit. 12 volts, when you flip the switch, it clicks on. Magnetic, you know, is what kicks it in, drives the pump. Uh, and this is a gear pump also. This pump is actually too small, uh, not enough gallons per minute, so I'm not using it. It's just a, one that I, I've had for quite a while. And uh, that is what we plan to go with. And this pump is actually a triple pump. And it actually has, it's one pump, but it's really three separate small pumps. These three different pumps pump a different gallon per minute. And the easiest way to see that and tell is the thickness of this compared to the thickness of this one, and then compare it to the thickness of this one. This is way more gallons per minute than this one, and then it's more than this one, because it, you know, it gets narrow. So this would be great on an application where you've got winches running, hydraulic motors you know, sort of take more fluid, less pressure, uh, more gallons per minute, and then you, know, you could run separate control valves on each one of these ports and you know you can pull actually connect your three inlets together and on a big enough line you can run them directly into your tank and you know combine the inlets and then have three separate outlets uh, you could run you know a six control valve on this one a five on this one a one on this one you know you could do anything you wanted on this setup uh, problem is is I, I really don't have a way to drive that and you know, I really don't need that. I'd love to have a duplex maybe, but not a not a tri pump. This is actually for another wrecker that I'm I've got about half built that I hadn't showed anybody yet. Uh not on YouTube for sure anyway. But uh we'll use it later and uh that's a really good system. Uh you know that's when you're getting into the bigger stuff, the bigger wreckers. But you know the system we're gonna use is just gonna be really simple. Uh we're gonna go from that pump and the pump that I'm gonna buy is uh, 11.6 gallon per minute at 1200 rpms and 1200 rpms is probably max I mean we would never run at that maybe a thousand but uh so you know 11 gallons per minute is you know that's adequate for what we're doing uh you know 11 12 uh you really don't want to go any bigger sometimes when you go bigger when your gallons per minute on your pump you actually overrun what power your engine has and to explain that if I had a 20 gallon per minute pump and I was running my engine at 600 RPM idle and I went and hit the control valve to move 20 gallons per minute when I hit that control valve it would pull down so hard on that engine it could actually you know kill the engine at idle and that's why a backhoe you know everybody runs a backhoe at a high, high RPM at idle you know a backhoe sometimes if you hit it quick you can kill the engine on it and uh, that's because it's a high gallons per minute so you really don't want to go too many gallons per minute with your pump and uh, you know on a wrecker somewhere around 12 is, is really good and uh, so that's what we're going to run is the 11.6 at 1200 rpm and the start with the pump we'll run from the pump to the control valve so we'll go ahead and discuss them okay this is just an old junk set of control valves I've got uh, it's an open center system and to explain that you have a, an inlet on this side, which is this port. You have an outlet on this side, which is this port. <clears throat> Fluid runs from that pump and pressurizes through here and runs, runs all the time. And it's just a loop. It would run in here, out of here, and back to the tank. And then the suction side would pull it back into the pump and it would just keep running. Just a full circle all the time. The only time that it diverts uh, is when you hit the control valve. When you hit the control valve, it actually diverts the fluid to either one of these, depending on which way you push the valve. And then you would have one line running from here to your one side of your cylinder, and one line running from here to the other side of your cylinder. And that's how you control it. It's just a simple system. It just diverts the fluid, let's say, to this one, goes to the cylinder, and then everything that's coming out of the cylinder is actually going to come back in this one. And it don't work as a, as a loop with a cylinder, I mean it actually pushes it in and then pulls it back out because there's no bypass through the cylinder but on a, like a hydraulic motor it does work as a loop, it goes in and then comes, you know, the same fluid comes back into this one. Uh, that's why you can only go so far on a cylinder and it stops is because it don't bypass inside the cylinder. Okay, the control valves we are using is 
are going to use is Prince SV valves and uh, they're actually rated at a maximum of 16 gallons per minute and uh, the, you've got to go with more gallons per minute than what your pump puts out and you can go however high above that as you want if you've got a 12 gallon per minute pump and you go with a 20 gallon per minute control valve there's not a problem with that if you go below it you start creating heat it'll create more pressure but anytime you're choking down on a line you know you're going to get more heat uh, it's going to it's hard on the system you wouldn't ever want to do that you wouldn't want to go with a 12 gallon per minute pump and a 10 gallon per minute control valve so always go above your your pump you know rating and uh, one thing you've got to have in your system is a pressure relief valve these are built in as you can see there's one here and there's actually one in here and this is what we're a set that you know the style we're using this is a Prince SV setup and you can see a pressure relief valve here it's adjustable and uh, the reason you have that when you get to the end of your cylinder uh, you would be deadheading and deadheading would be just building you know all the pressure that the pumps available to build and I've actually seen the nuts ripped off the the actual rod in the cylinder because it went down in deadhead and didn't have a pressure relief valve. So, I mean, you're sort of creating a hydraulic bomb, you know, a lot of pressure. And if your pump's putting out, three, you know, 3,000 PSI, then, you know, it's, it could uh, blow something pretty easy. Uh, you know, hoses, uh, any weak point, you know, it's going to get the, the weakest point. But pressure relief valve, what it does is when you deadhead, it opens. And when it opens, it just returns the fluid back into the system. And that just, you know, keeps you from creating a, you know, a deadlock. And without a pressure relief valve, you know, you don't want to run it. Let's just put it that way. And these are adjustable. This is adjustable. This one is actually set factory at 2,000 PSI. Can be adjusted anywhere from 1,500 to 3,000 on the SV valves. Uh, good simple valves. They both together. It's called a stack valve unit. This is your inlet. This is the outlet. And this would actually sit together like this. And then you can put, you know, dual acting open control valve, or, you know, open center control valve in here. You can add them. And the bolts that go between them, it's a bolt kit, you know, sort of like a threaded rod, but not. Uh, but, I mean, basically the same thing. It's a long rod. goes through, O-rings go between it. You know, you can get a single acting, which would be a cylinder that pushed and then gravity back down. You could get a double acting, which is a push and pull cylinder you can actually get this in a closed system uh, where your fluid don't run all the time and you know that depends on what pump you're running you know you wouldn't run a closed system control valve on a regular pump like that we're running because you're creating a you know a bomb a pressure bomb but uh, but that's what we're using and that's you know how the control valves work uh, some valves as you can see this one I believe this is a loader valve so you know you've got two positions which would be or three I guess the center which would be sort of like a neutral and then you would have one that pushed fluid here and then you pull it back and pushes fluid here on a loader control valve you'll have a float valve and what that does is you push the lever all the way forward and it actually allows the fluid to go in and no pressure on either side and that lets you float your bucket and that's what makes you know you're able to level your ground good and, and such like that uh, hydraulic cylinders this is just a uh, uh, three and a half inch bore, eight inch stroke, and that means it moves eight inches, you know, from all the way in to all the way out. And the bore inside here is three and a half inches, and you know you can do the math. It's not a big deal to figure out how many, you know, depending on what psi you're using of how much pressure this is going to be able to push. Uh, that looks like I think it's a two inch rod. So your pull is not going to be as strong as your push because you're not filling the entire cylinder up. You've got two inches of space there, you know, in a, in a circumference that's not pushing fluid so you're never going to have as much pull as you do push uh, cylinders like I said pretty simple uh, this is a dual acting uh, or double acting you can call it. pressure goes in here to push it out pressure goes in here to push it back in some cylinders just have this and then this would be vented to where it would come back down and, and vent some cylinders actually use the top side as a reservoir on a big you know some of your old state road dump trucks and such uh, your fluid that goes back in here would be fluid that you're only using to uh, you know help run your hydraulic system and but there's no actual pressure pushing you know, ever pushed on it 
So that's you know a pretty good way to to take advantage of the area that's there. Uh, here's a hydraulic motor, and this particular motor I think is off skid steer. This is a this would be a high torque, low speed. Uh, you can get a motor in any way you want. You know, uh, lower torque, higher speed, all different designs and and of motors, and they're really simple. Fluid in, fluid out. Uh, you're gonna create more heat with a motor than you are with a uh, cylinder and that's one of the reasons sometimes when you see me winching if it's a really you know mobile homes where I'm been there an hour winching I may switch winches and you know you can actually put your hand up on it and you feel the real you know a lot of heat in the in the hydraulic system when you're doing that uh, you know you're no matter what you do when you're running fluid through a hydraulic motor you're gonna be choking it down if you've ever seen a hydraulic air compressor you'll notice there's a really big cooling system uh, on, a, on the hydraulic unit and that's what cools it down but uh the other thing reusable fittings some people like them some people don't uh, I like them I don't use them in a situation where I've got pressure on a cylinder or anything like that you know on a on a system where you're pulling down on the cylinder and there's no weight seems to work fine uh, on a hydraulic motor have never had a trouble with them they work really good uh, you just got to put them on right of course like anything else uh, they're not real cheap but they're you know I, I bought a, a really big stock of them uh, off of, at an estate and so I use them quite often I would never use one uh, on this side of the cylinder when you're pushing let's say you're holding a big load and uh, you also want to use a locking valve which I don't have one right here but uh, locking valve holds this cylinder in place until you put fluid pressure against the locking valve uh, and what that does is if you you had your locking valve here and then you had your hose running from your control valve to your locking valve if that hose blew your locking valve would hold your cylinder without any problem uh, if not when the hose blew it would drop okay uh, it requires pressure coming out of this hose to the locking valve to, to unlock it and you're going to lose you know some you're going to get a little more resistance it's not going to flow quite as good but it's something that you know you've got to have it's really smart to take your locking valve and run a steel line from it to here because if you got a locking valve here and you run a rubber line if that rubber line blows it'll still drop so if you can hook your locking valve right into it you know it it'll work best uh, but the system we're doing is the simplest system that there is when it comes to hydraulics I mean you really don't get anything any more complicated. The only thing that complicates this at all is the fact that we're running 12, you know, 12 different control valves. And uh, the way that we're going to do it, and something I missed there was power beyond. Uh, this control valve system does have power beyond right here. And what you would do is this is two, and let's say you needed four, and you're running four, you know, four hydraulic cylinders. So you would put your pressure in and you'd have your pressure come out. You wouldn't want to run this directly to your next control valve to add two more on. Uh, it wouldn't work right. You get back pressure. It starts acting weird and I've seen it before. You know, your cylinders don't work like they're supposed to. Uh, that's why you have a power beyond. This is where you could come out to go to your next uh, set of valves. And that's what we're going to run on one side. Uh, this does not have power beyond. and. Uh, so what we're going to do, I'm actually probably going to clean these up and use them. I'll buy all the pieces that go in between it. And uh, I will take and uh, buy another setup. I'll need one just like this one for the back side. Oh, I'm sorry, I'll need one just like this for the front side, but I'll need a, a different back one for the Power Beyond. I don't think either one of them are Power Beyond, but I'll, I'll check and make sure. Uh, and it could be. But we'll run a Power Beyond. We're going to run six and six. And you know we're looking at uh, just about $500 a piece, so that's the reason I'd be using these to save. You know I'd probably save $120 maybe. Uh, so you know we're going to be into the control valves somewhere around a thousand dollars. Be into the pump for you know close to $600, and uh, stuff can add up quick. Uh, cylinders were. I'm not so worried about using new cylinders, and the reason is is I'll repack them. Uh, a cylinder or something you can physically check to see if the shaft's bit. You can see if there's pitting in the shaft. You can see if there's pitting in the bore. Uh, that's not a problem. 
you know you can rebuild them no problem at all and uh, it's something that you can see the problem you know control valve they get wear on them you know you can't really tell uh, same way with a pump you know we want to have adequate pressure and and dependability and that's why we're going to go with new control valves new pump uh, we'll have all new hydraulic lines on it I've got a lot of four wire lines a lot of them we're going to run two wire uh, I've got everything new for four wire but and uh, I just would have to take them to a friend to crimp them but he's actually uh, we'll do all of my my two wire hoses for me and hoses can get really expensive so you can easily put more in hoses than you've got in that set of control valves let's put it that way so uh, hope this helps somebody uh, any hydraulic questions you know I don't know at all but if I can help I don't mind helping uh, and I think hopefully that'll help as I'm building this, you'll understand a little bit more of why I'm doing what I'm doing and how I'm doing it. Uh, you know, it's just a it's just a, a circle of hydraulics from your pump to your control valves, out of your control valves, through a filter, back into your tank. From your tank, back into your pump. Just a big circle, that's all it is. And, uh, you know, all you're doing is is, is that, that belt line circle, you know, around that big city, and then right here is all your exits. Uh, you know, you, you exit and get back on. So, I mean, it's it's really simple setup. But uh, appreciate everybody watching. Appreciate all my subscribers and everybody that comments and likes. And uh, I really hope, like I said, this will help somebody out. But we'll get back on the record here as soon as this rain clears up. We're going to get wide open on the bed. I think you'll be surprised how fast it goes. Uh, and until next time, bye.